Thank you. So we're really excited that all of you could join us here for this launch event today. So we've just got a, we're going to have a series of uh, softball questions, I think. But we, we'd love to get your, your frank responses, because I think some of the questions that I'd love to share are, are questions that a lot of our students frequently think about. So, so let's start, we'll start with the first question. And we'll, go, we'll start with Mimi, because we always want to be ladies first in, in the faculty. So, That's great. Uh, I try to talk more than 20 minutes, so you oh, guys can be great. free. Yeah. Okay. Just do it. <laughs> so I was told that Mimi likes challenges, so I, we'll, we'll build up to some challenging questions as, as we move forward. So students uh, spend a lot of time thinking about different career paths, especially a lot of students here, by the very fact that they've decided to kind of participate in the mentor program tells me that they're thinking about this. So can all of you, starting with Mimi, describe how you found the path that was right for you in your career and offer some thoughts that um, maybe will assist our students as they consider that same question? Sure, actually it's a very interesting question and I will tell my experience uh, from the very first beginning. I had a dream to be a diplomat when, before I um, went to Peking University. So I chose to study international relationship uh, in Peking University, then uh, went to a Canadian School of Government in the States for the graduate degree. But after uh, I finished my graduate school in, uh, in the States, I found it's really difficult to, to be a diplomat back in China because, you know, um, government saw that uh, you're just too liberal and uh, you might be condemned by the Western ideas. So I have to go through the very long job application if I really want to be a, a diplomat back in Chinese government. And that's why randomly I uh, entered the banking industry. Uh, first start with commercial bank, uh, then uh, in uh, private wealth management. So when I look back, uh, I would say it was a luck that um, I choose this career. It's not, it's not that I, I will not give advice to the students. My advice is, actually try to be open-minded and explore whatever uh, opportunities you can get because um, you never know what's really expecting, what's really uh, in the future expecting you. And uh, from the whole career path, I will, think, I will say that I get no more and more by myself. I realize what I don't like. I don't want a routine life that uh, I can forecast maybe in five years or 10 years what I'm going to be in the same office doing the same thing. No, that's not what I want. So uh, in, the, in this industry, it's a very dynamic industry. I talk to different peoples, I face with the market, and every day the market is new. So I feel very excited. That's why uh, I would say it's very lucky. I, fi I, I finally end up in this industry, but for the students like you, you guys have a whole new horizon in front of you. Don't narrow yourself or narrow your opportunities just in banking industry or consulting or whatever um, gold collar industries. But um, there's a lot of opportunities there. And through the whole journey, you will find that uh, actually uh, you will be amazed by what is expecting for you in the future. Okay, thanks, Mimi. So, Teddy, if we can go to you next, if that's okay. Surely. Well, uh, similar to Mimi. Uh, I, I think it's not easy for youngsters like you to choose a path at the very forefront, right? It's not easy to make sure that you know what you're going, where you're going, and what you want to do. The point is, back to my own age when I was young here, I, I want to be an architect, you know, a big architect, right? But I failed to do that. And I want to be a medicine doctor as well. I failed again, right? I don't do that. But I actually started with as accountant from the Pricewaterhouse and as auditor, right? So that was not my... My, my passion or something like that. But the point is, you have to really come to do something that you are I mean, available, that you can do it, and gradually you find your path, gradually you find yourself, and you just steal through the life and find yourself, your passion, your your, what you love, what you want to do, what you are and who you are. So gradually there's a lot of chance you can really get yourself to the road that you want to be. The point is, make sure that you be true to yourself, what you really want, what you really like, okay? You have some passion for something, you graduate with yourself, no problem at all. So starting, good, I mean, starting with a good starting point is good, but it's not the end of I mean, life after all. It's not good, yet you grab every 14 years you have and try to steal away back to your own you and then you find yourself at the end of the day, right? But yes, myself, I'm not yet ended. 
I'm still changing myself with the, with the world. I mean, the world's changing so fast. So I found myself more people, people rather than thicker people. So, so I, I don't do accounting anymore. But yeah, by my profession, I'm still the internal audit of the company, right? That's my professionalism. But myself, it's going to more people like. So that's why I'm here to be your, I mean, hopefully be one of your mentors, your friends, to make sure that we connect to each other. That's very important. So don't mind to have a very, you know, not very clear starting point. So far, the journey is more important than the starting point, and the end will come to me automatically. Okay, thanks, Teddy. So I'm really glad Mashir's here, partly because him and I are working on a project together right now, and partly because he's a, a fairly recent graduate of HKU, fairly recent. So love to hear your thoughts about Just your to career. tell you that I'm a master's graduate, so I don't look so old after that. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Have been a faculty of business economics. Uh, alum, and uh, it's a true honor to be sitting on this hallowed step, as they call it. Uh, my journey has been a bit mixed, I think. Um, I took up my first job because it allowed me to sleep for a longer time, <laughs> according to my schedule. Now, um, so I was an engineer working on industrial engineering, and um, I used to love numbers, and I loved uh, just you know information. I was a, what I call myself as a news junkie. Um, so a, a trading company came into our uh, campus, back in Bangalore in India and uh, they offered a job, was paying as much as I would get in a bank, uh, but it was like you start at noon and you finish at midnight because we were trading European and American. Now, as I said, this is perfect, I can sleep uh, late, which I normally do, I can sleep at 1 a.m. and I can get up at 11 a.m., which is perfect for me. So, but it's also about the numbers, uh, I, I enjoyed their entrance exam, uh, it was more challenging, it was Sudoku and a lot of other things. So. When I joined in, um, it was, I, I didn't know anything about finance per se, I was an engineer, but I enjoyed being with the numbers and figuring out, for the first six months, I couldn't tell anybody what I was doing, uh, even to my parents or my friends about what exactly I was trading. I was trading Euro dollar interest rate futures, which still is a mouthful for those who don't know. But I enjoyed it and I stayed there. I think that's one key element is how much you enjoy your job and how much you learn. I learned, I was learning on a daily basis. I was fortunate to, uh, in some senses, see some of the most volatile times in trading. And uh, after nine years, I decided to my MBA because I wanted to uh, increase my skill set and uh, come closer to mainland China because I, I believe India and China are going to play a big role in the future and I wanted to get as close as possible for that. And now my career in terms of fintech is more, again, a bit of chance, but it was something about following my passion uh, or interest. So when I came back from my London Business School leg of the MBA, I was very keen on financial technology because I'm from finance, but I'm also from a technology capital of India, Bangalore. And FinTech was just grooming in Hong Kong. I started off as a volunteer in the first FinTech event, so I was sending tweets. Um, and from that, I became a founding board member and founding member of the FinTech Association. I was working with a consulting firm, and then when the opportunity rose to become the general manager, I took it up. It was just a natural progression for me, so when I Went from being a board member to being a paid employee, it was still the same thing. I still have long hours, but I enjoy it because it's very, very different facets. I think from what both Mimi and uh, Teddy have said, the key is A, enjoying what you're doing. Second is, are you finding it challenging enough? If you find it boring, too soon, too quick, either you're too good for the job or, or you don't understand the job. It's one <laughs> of the two, right? It uh, means you need to f figure out whether you, you need to be there. Um, and so. It's, it's important, you will not enjoy your job every hour, every minute. If anybody says they do that throughout the day, every time, they're probably lying. Uh, but the whole idea is that for a majority of the time you're there, you enjoy it. And even if you're doing grunt work, the wins are worthwhile. Right? That's, that's how I see career as wins can be very different ways. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's my thinking. Thanks, that was a great narrative. And just to clarify, since the dean's here and I have students here, I do enjoy my job every minute, every hour, just to clarify. I have some students who will be in class tomorrow morning, so I said that for the record. But So now we're at a, at a, a mentor launch event, um, and I'm going to kind of discuss the role of being, having good mentors, but then how to be a good mentee. So we'll start with the good mentor piece first. Um, in all of your careers and lives, I'm sure you've been influenced by at least one, if not more, mentors. So was any of that uh, advice or that influence, what respect was that memorable for you and how did that influence kind of the decisions that you made? Yeah, so. Well, me, I yeah. can start first. Uh, I, I remember one thing that my, my mentor had taught me. It's, it doesn't matter what to do, how to do it. 
The most important part is why you do it. Understanding the why is very important. I don't know values underlying anything. I believe everything, every matters has a value underlying. If you understand it, you will like it. And you like it, you will do something for it. Drive yourself, right? It's not the what itself. Maybe you don't know how to do it. You don't know how to do it. You don't know where to do it. And who to turn to. The point is, once you understand why you should do it, there's a mission underlying. That drives you towards it. And then with the first step, you're getting closer. So my mentor told me that, first of all, understand why you want to do it. It's because your own passion drives you through it all the hard way, even though. Ups and downs doesn't matter. But you enjoy because you know that that's the value for trying doing it. So first thing first, understand why you want to do it. Um. I had a very good uh, mentor when I first entered the financial industry. The biggest thing I learned from him is um, EQ is more important than IQ. Um, I graduated from uh, one of the top universities uh, in, in China and also in the States. So I feel, I feel like very proud of myself. And I, I feel like my IQ is very high. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, when I uh, when I was in the bank, I, I challenged one of the formula our bank um, given to all the relation managers. I said, no, this is totally wrong. What I learned from my university, this is the totally wrong way to to calculate something. So um, I I well um, I feel. I found myself in the very end that uh, in the very awkward situation because all the colleagues looked me really in a different way. And they found like, wow, you, you always like to challenge others, right? You always do things in your own right, disregard of the formula that has been in the bank for so long time. So I felt like uh, if I do it again, for sure, I will uh, stick to my principles, but the way I put it will be indifferent. So uh, that comes with the EQ. EQ means that uh, how you can emotionally, or how you can com control your emotion, or how you can deliver something in a way that other people can accept. And that's the thing I, uh, that's the biggest thing I learned for my first job. And I think for the students here, and uh, you guys are uh, uh, in the top university, uh, also uh, should uh, equip with all the knowledge or techniques, no matter in the um, uh, in the academic side or on other sides. But be uh, try to be more open-minded, uh, do more teamwork, and also try to listen to others rather than only listen to yourself. Because uh, you are living in a society, your success is not only de uh, depends on your own efforts, but also on others' support. So I hope um, we can all remember this. That will be very useful going forward. Thanks. Um, I, I'm, I'm learning from the two of them here uh, yeah. as much as I can say. So from, from my perspective, I think if you're a mentor, what I've learned from some of my really good mentors in HQ, one is sitting here, Sachin Titmus, uh, from the MBA faculty, uh, I mean, MBA program, who has been mentoring me from the time I joined all the way to over the weekend. Uh, but the things you learn from your mentors is, um, I think a good mentor for me, the ones who really have been able to show me the direction, um, not necessarily lay down the path for me. Um, they, they helped me discover myself. I think that was the key to my strong mentors is they don't tell me anything that I don't know. Uh, one more mentor, um, Mark Rosenfeld, who also has had a big influence on me. He always comes back with why. So like, why? Like if I say, I, I tried reaching out to this company and I, you know, they didn't respond. So I said, why? What would you do if you're in this place? Did you call him up? Why? And that, that pushes me to, and I'll give him the answer. It's like, you knew the answer, so why are you here with me? Uh, it is just getting that answer out of you is, is what the mentor did very well for me. Uh, and that's where I find that's the key is not so much to tell your views to the person, but it's just a question of finding out and making the student himself get the answer because then the lesson is very different to because uh, they've experienced it rather than you telling them what to do and then them trying to experience it so mm. that'll be my key if learning from what my mentors have taught me. Okay, so. great thank you so we'll maybe switch to the other side of the question then so we focus on the advice you receive from mentors as all a lot of the the young students here you know frequent when when we talk to them uh, they talk about you know I understand mentors and mentee relationships are important but how do I do that? So maybe some tips or thoughts about how to be a good mentee 
uh, with respect to kind of engaging your mentor? <laughs> you mean ladies first. Okay. <laughs> um, first of all, don't be shy and uh, ask questions or make appointments. Uh, don't be frustrated if we uh, didn't get back to you in a very short time because uh, I didn't mean that. Maybe sometime it just and take me a few more time to take me a more time to deal with uh, the emails or WeChat or messengers. But we are always welcome your calls, email, WeChat messengers. And uh, a second to be uh, very specific. And um, as a mentor, we are not the god. Uh, we cannot <laughs> guide you through the whole life path. And uh, and different people feel different things. Um, the feeling. Well, different people have the different feeling towards the same thing. So be specific means that if you come with uh, some difficulties or hard situation to deal with, ask us. And we have the experience and we have the knowledge to deal with that. But uh, for the very big questions or very general questions, actually, uh, sometimes I'm hesitate to give any uh, directions because um, I can give you advice from my side. I also welcome students to seek advice from other side. Then you draw a conclusion by yourself rather than just listen to one party. Um, it, what I have learned uh, from some of the students I met and what I did wrong, I think one key element which is correct, I mean, you don't expect your mentor to be a god and don't expect them to give you a job. Uh, very, very, very important with 50 mentors sitting here. 50 students don't expect you to get a job. Uh, in fact, sometimes the students are matched with mentors who are not from the same industry, but they might actually be able to help you a lot more than the mentor from the same industry. So don't look at them as a you know job portal and say, here's my CV, help me out. Uh, I've rarely done that with any of my uh, mentors and have also been fortunate they've kind of told me much early in the stage that you don't expect a job. So don't expect that, it's, it's a lesson for you because you might go in saying it's a mentor and you might be focused too much on a job. Um, the key element for this program is not for you know this uh, university to help you get a job, but it's to help you become better and do build out a career, not just a job. That's a key element difference for me, right? If they wanted to, I mean, the HKU has the most established and prestigious alum in Hong Kong, you know, from senior government officials all the way to CEOs of companies. Getting you jobs is not a difficult phase for the university, but helping you build a career is the key. So that's the main uh, lesson. The second thing is come prepared, right? Don't just come in for a conversation. You're not coming there for a chat. Uh, the mentors will be nice to you. They'll talk le nicely to you. But come prepared in terms of what you want to do. Uh, what are your questions? Uh, so you're also prepared mentally. And when you come the second time, there should be progress, right? You should have done what you are asked to. If you come back asking the same question and you get the same answer, there's no progress. The mentor's going to lose interest and not going to follow up. And then you're like, oh, the mentor doesn't respond to me. There must be a reason why the mentor doesn't respond to you. Some of the reasons are because you're not doing uh, what you came for. And those tasks might seem very trivial, but that's from our experience that the mentors have that they tell you to do certain things. So these are the two lessons from my side. Thanks. Right. Uh, to me, I think most importantly is attitude so far. You must be proactively, I mean, engaging with your mentors and treat them as your friends, <laughs> not your, I mean, your boss or whatsoever. They are, they are a very nice person, right? All the mentors here should be a nice person and a very good person. They are coming to, to help you, to give, them, give you their, their advices, their support whatsoever. So please, to them as friends, to engage them on the first thing first. Secondly, don't stick to one single mentor. Mm. Okay, try to make more mentors, I mean, more friendship with mentors. The more you have, the more resources you have, right? The more opportunity you get meeting your mentor as your potential employer sometime, maybe. So in the future, maybe you have come to an interview and seen your mentors over there, right? So you have a higher chance of being hired somehow. So in that case, try to connect more. That will give your life more resources, more connectivity, more future opportunities. Uh, great, thanks, Teddy. And I, I like that. Oh, go ahead, Monsieur. I was yeah. just gonna add one thing. I think once you finish the official mentoring year, right, it's important you stay in touch and update people what's going on. Just, hey, I changed the job, this is what happened. Hope you have, well, you know, whatever you want. Just a small reason, just do that. That's a good way. In the later on in your career, you might have an opportunity through that, but that's just one point of that. Okay. Great, thank you. So we've got time for one more question, and so I'm going into my uh, my list. I'll give you the hard one. Okay. So in um, in social psychology research, one of the hot topics right now is about resilience. 
right? So how do like, people get over failure? Now, this is important because a lot of the students here are not used to that, particularly our undergrad students. Most of them have done very well in whatever secondary schools they were at, wherever they were in the world before they came here. And all of a sudden, they come here and they find, oh, it's pretty challenging. And so just because they didn't get an A+, plus, they feel like, oh, I'm a, I'm, a bit of, you know, I'm a bit of a failure. Or like because they, they apply for 10 jobs, they don't get any interviews. They feel like maybe I'm a bit of a failure. But I always try to tell them that you know, it's a process. It's important to be resilient. You know, there's le things you're learning even so. So I'm sure all of you have had some challenges at a certain point. Um, and how did you kind of bounce back from that, this idea of being resilient? Well, maybe answer first, okay? <laughs> failure is a good thing. If you fail fast, <laughs> and we come up first. You don't fail one time, and last time you fail, you're going to die. So I would rather, rather have my failure earlier in my life so that I can feel the pain of it, and then get, reflect myself, and get myself more stronger. So EQ, AQ, is all important to your life. IQ is, of course, important, but AQ is much more important. I mean, more volatile work like this, I mean, the VUCA. We use CA, right? Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity here. So with this life here, we both competing or I mean with each other here. So you either fail or succeed. The point is your failure rate is very high because I mean a lot of people are competing against you. So what do you do? Get used to it. Failing is a normal norm, right? The point is fail fast. And then reflect. Fail smart. Learn from it and again it's better. So, better. so by getting stronger and stronger, you one day you'll be successful. So I think failure is a good thing if you can learn from it. If you fail and then you just, just let it go, okay? You just, you just abandon yourself. That's really a failure. You're really a failure. Okay, thank you, Jenny. Okay. I totally echo your ideas. And uh, I will also say that uh, when you feel like uh, the God closed the door for you, but actually maybe there's a still window left open. So uh, if you feel like you go, you're facing a, 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 a big difficulties or facing a failure, try to look at things from different angle or try uh, from different ways to do with that. And actually when you look back, when we grow up, we always feel a lot of failures. The failures in your kindergarten, your primary school, or your universities, we will become meaningless when you are in the society. So when you look back last year, when I look back last year, I go through, I, I, I face a lot of failures as well. But each year, um, we are getting stronger. So uh, I would say that um, try a, a balanced, try, try to, to be open-minded, see, see things from different angles, and also keep a, a happy mode. That will encourage us to go through the long journey. It's just the beginning of the journey. It's not the end. Okay, thank you. Monsieur. Um, I'm learning again, and I think the two points, just to add from what Teddy and Newman have said. The first one is, um, in terms of failure, it's something that you always see in life. It's, there's nobody who can do it. And I'm an ex-trader, and um, I would have, the, we would have the best minds in India from IITs, etc. And they would come and crumble because, as you said, they've never seen failure in their life. Top sportsman, top student, you know, and then they come and they lose money and there's this guy who's an average student making money because they had stronger EQ, right? Um, so the key element for me to learn from there was, um, you may fail today, but you can pick up and you go back and you go and you try, right? Uh, Samuel Beckett once said, you know, ever tried, ever failed, try again, fail better. Uh, that's, that's the philosophy of life that I've followed. But I think that it's, it's key for resilience is to look back at, you don't realize it, but look back in your life. There are failures you don't acknowledge uh, from your kindergarten to your life and you accept that as a way of life. But in reality, there were failures, there were step backs and you dealt with it. So learning from your own personal lessons is, is your biggest, um, I mean, that's your, your biggest lesson in terms of how to be resilient. The second thing is about being um, true to yourself. Uh, I think that's the key is you keep flowing, uh, keep a mind, open mind, have a good group of people around uh, next to you and you know, you, you, you should let it out. You should talk to people when you probably are having a tough time because it's not to do with letting your emotions out and they'll tell you some, some advice. It just, it frees you up a little bit more and they might be able to tell you a few things that you know, gives you support. Um, rather than try to take this whole burden on yourself, um, I know in, in Asian society, and I'm including India because India is part of Asia, it is not a good thing to, you know, for, to show failure and, you know, failure is looked down upon. But I think that's a key element that we need to change is that if you had a failure, it is a justification for the failure. 
it's not about why you failed, it's about what you're doing after you failed that matters. Uh, and that's why sharing that and learning the lesson of how what went wrong would be important. Yeah, thanks everybody. So we're, we're out of time, uh, but I think these nuggets of wisdom have been great. And I think uh, just as a final note, to echo something that Dean said in the beginning about how we have roughly 56 students now, I hope all of our students who are participating in the mentoring program will be doing something like this in a few years, that you feel the desire to come back to not just be a mentee, but to also be a mentor and to give back to the community to continue to build the, the base. And I think that's something that we can all strive for. Anyways, on that note, if we can give a round of applause to our, our panel.